Welcome to this combat mission operational layer and unit loss tracking video. Now for the videos I'm going to create and the method I'm going to show you, I'm going to use Battle for Normandy but what I'm going to show you can be applied to any of the combat mission games. Basically this is something that I've often thought about uh, trying to use the combat mission games themselves to create an operational layer and to be honest what I'm going to show you is nothing really new and you may well have read someone making similar suggestions I don't know I've recently had a hunt through to see if I could find anybody that has made this sort of suggestion I couldn't find it that doesn't mean someone hasn't come up with these ideas before unfortunately cannot do absolutely everything in the game itself. I will use paint which comes with um, windows but that doesn't mean to say that you have to be some wonderful expert with it. I am certainly not an expert with paint but what I did um, to create what I will eventually show you took me very little time to figure out and do. I think it took in, in total about 30 minutes and what I will show you to how to do things will probably take about 10 minutes. So it's very simple, nothing flashy. I'll work on the principle throughout this that there are two players and a referee but obviously you can go a much bigger scale with more players or even do it solo if you want although that will involve more background work in terms of making sure that you've got AI plans etc for maps but uh, that falls again that falls outside the scope of these series of videos and uh, I have already done uh, tutorial videos on AI plans right so let's get on with it In this part of our operational layer tutorial we are going to be looking at using a master map for our operation. Now obviously there, there are other people that are doing um, operational layers involving much bigger maps and you know that's something you can do if you, you want to but we're, we're keeping this within the game, keeping it nice, basic, simple. And the master map that I'm using is the Joanna Hove map. I do apologise for my mispronunciations. So let's just have a quick look. OK, this is a nice sized map. It's uh, 3,000 metres by 2,000 metres. Um, and it uh, almost fits entirely on our screen when we're zoomed out. And what I want to do is have much smaller um, battles than this whole map. Now obviously I, I'm do going through this very quickly because I want to show you a very quick and easy way of doing this. Now the way I I'm going to approach this is quite simple. If I just press the overlay button and you can see here that I have an overlay with hexes and marked the areas um, with IDs A1, A2, A3, A4 if you can't see them. Now obviously hexes are easier in a way from in terms of when you're de um, declaring movements C2 to B3, B3 to C3 etc but we can't have hex sized maps so they can only be squares or rectangles and we'll come to that a little bit later how that will work. Now this is an overlay and if you're not too sure about it, it is a BMP file called Special Editor Overlay and it resides in your Z folder. I created this overlay using paint. Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, it took me roughly 30 minutes of scrabbling around um, paint. And if you look very closely, you can see that some of the lines don't match up right. It's, it's a bit crude and with a little bit of extra effort you could come up with something a lot neater. 
but I will show how to do I did that in paint and I, sp I suspect now I could probably knock up something like this within about 20 minutes and using the same methods I could use uh, build just a square base for the, this map so let's take the overlay off now we've chosen our map for our operation and the first thing we really want to do is save it and I'm going to save it at the game files level just to keep it keep it out you could always move these files around into the different areas as you want and I'm going to call this op layer mm for master map now that we've saved it we can do whatever we like to this map actually um, we've kept our original master map that's going to remain unedited and I'm quite happy about this now we get into a little bit of a funny business because this overlay isn't fixed to the map permanently um, obviously with the O command we can take the overlay essentially off but it's a map we want to have presented to the players on either side and also the referee needs this as a reference point for when he's marking out who's used what force moved what forces into which hex etc and where battles might be occurring and to do this it's going to be very simple We're going to essentially just take a screenshot now it could be that the when you look at the screenshot the scale of it isn't uh, to your liking and you could always do something a little bit more flash by um, taking screenshots at a much closer level and then you'd have to use something like paint or photoshop or whatever you use to merge those together and present it to the players so essentially we've now created our operational layer our grand map for the fighting to comment on now the next thing we need to do is to create the uh, battle maps themselves and we're going to use the hexes as we've got here as a guide but as you probably are aware yourselves that um, there is a slight problem and let's go with the width and I hope you can see this once we start and we'll use depth so I, I hope you can see this if I start to if I say okay I want to do B3 as a, a map if I start reducing you can see the overlay is adjusting with the size of the map and so B3 area is moving now obviously you can use this similar method if you want to um, stretch these hexes more over the whole map itself so anyway how can we get round this well it's quite simple first of all we're going to save this so we're going to keep the op player notation and we're going to call this tack map b3 now I'm showing you a very crude way of doing this you can come up with all manner of uh, ways of saving time you can also create these maps as and when they're required using a hex like this um, we've got to square it off with a hex when you are going moving say from C2 to B3 you can actually use this side and so if we square off we can use this area here as the setup zone I'm going to use a distinctive uh, ground tile I'm going to call that sand and just up the paintbrush size now I'm going to go over into the other areas I'm not worried about that because say for on here this is going to end up being the setup zone if going from B4 to B3 um, 
here we're going to, as I mentioned earlier here, we, we'd have a setup zone if we're going from C3 to B3. So anyway, so sand. So what I'm going to do is take roughly, I think, here. And I'm creating a marker, quite simply. Let's do down here. Now I'm going to remove the overlay. As you can see on here, we've got a, a rough square, so now I'm going to get rid of the depth. This is very slow because my PC isn't very uh, fast machine. But you can see that uh, steadily the lower part of the map is disappearing. One more, then we'll take it down up then we'll take it from the top now you might find yourself being bored by watching me constantly do this but um, showing you how to do this in real time shows you how little time is actually going to be needed to achieve the result now we just take it from the right As I was saying, you can do this for um, all of the maps. Or the referee might decide to only do this as the battles occur. Once you've done this, you've got all your initial maps of the battles. They, they don't have to be done again. And you can also return to this for other battles. So you could swap sides. You could, um, instead of, say, attacking north and south, you could, could attack east and west. And there we have it. We now have our battle map. 784 width by 944 depth, which is okay. So you, you just need to um, be aware of the size of the master map you're using in relation to the um, overlay you're going to use to get the right sized maps that you want. So now we just hit the save. As you see, Opla attack map B3. And we've now got our first tactical map for our operation. So now I've shown you creating the operational layer using a master map within the game and then the individual battlefields. Now, obviously, the what rules you have for your operation is down entirely to you. Uh, you make it as simple or as complex as you like, whether you have reinforcements, replacements, merging units that are depleted or deleting them, resupply, etc, etc. It's entirely up to you. You just keep it as basic or as complex as you want. And in terms of the maps themselves, you don't have to have a hard and fast, you only have a battle in A1, only in A2. You could, if say A2 is attacking B2 and B2 is attacking A2, you could decide that you'd square off this small area here and you'd have um, forward units matching up ag against each other which might decide on um, whether B2 moves into A2 or A2 is allowed to assault B2, etc. 
as I say, you make it as complex as you you want to want to do it. So here I am in Microsoft Paint, and I'm going to create the area overlay. So first of all, what we want to do is select the shape um, from here, and I'm going to do the hexagons as I've shown you already. You can obviously choose the uh, rectangle to do the squares, or whatever. So let's just do one and I'm happy about that and now I'm going to click on what we'll do is we'll zoom in and now I hit select uh, it can be a bit difficult for me to get this right because uh, I'm not great, oh this looks good better than the one I did actually Okay, so now I'm going to hit the copy. Let's come out of this slightly. So now I'm going to do paste. So I just hit the paste, and as you can see, we've got our copy. I take this and whoops. good enough for me. I'm only going to do this crudely. And as you can see we are building up our overlay. Do a couple more just to do a three by three. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is label each of these hexes, and uh, we do that quite simply by clicking on the text icon. Go a one, pull this into the side a little bit and just move it into position A2 and so you get the picture, it's pretty quick very easy and that is really all you have to do, you just fill up the rest of them one thing though when you've finished there is something you've got to do because if you just saved this and made it into the screen editor overlay and put it into the Z folder when you go into combat mission and look in the scenario editor um, at this overlay on the map this whole area would be the map and so you'd get all of this area wasted you wouldn't cover the map you'd just be the center part to get round that, so what we need to do is we hit select, and I hope I'm going to get this all. Oh, it's more or less looking good actually. Okay, now if we hit the crop, we will get rid of all that white space around it. There you go. So now we just hit here and do save as. BMP and we're just going to call it um, our overlay and it's done and so that's the end of creating your operational layer map and and the battlefields